Welcome to this lesson on the factors that affect solubility. The question of the day, what are some ways that you can get sugar in a cup of coffee or tea to dissolve better? Dissolving is a kind of strange process. We will have some type of ionic lattice or even like a sugar cube, some type of crystal, some solid. And in order for that to dissolve, it is going to have to break into smaller pieces and then wiggle in between the water molecules and find some space. In order for this to happen, the ions in the crystal will have to break apart, which we call dissociation. In something covalent, they do not dissociate, but they still find their way in between water molecules to dissolve. We can help solids dissolve in water by increasing the temperature of the water. So really what happens is that those water molecules are now moving faster, so the solid can find little pockets to dissolve. We can also stir the water or agitate it, which will help to move water molecules out of the way for the solid particles to wiggle in between and dissolve. The lower the concentration of the solution, the better the solid will have at dissolving. The reason for this is because there is less of the solid already dissolved or <laughs> taking up the, the empty pockets in between water molecules. The more stuff you have dissolved, the harder it is to dissolve stuff. So obviously the more water you have or the less solid that you have, the easier it is to get that solid to dissolve. You can also crush your solid. The larger the surface area of your sample, the better time it'll have dissolving because more of those solid particles will be in contact with water molecules. Dissolving gases is a little bit different. And the reason for this is because we really don't want those water molecules to move out of the way. The reason is because gases obviously are less dense than liquid. So what will happen is that the um, air bubbles, whatever gas it is, they are going to try to rise through the, the solution and escape. Um, you know, this happens with soda. If you leave the lid off of a soda for too long, the bubbles will evaporate. They will leave the bottle and then your soda will go flat. Um, so we don't want those water molecules to move. We want to keep them not moving so much so that the gas has a harder time escaping. So it's kind of the opposite here. When we dissolve solids, we want our water moving very well to make room for our solid to kind of wiggle in between. But for gases, we want our water moving very slowly so that the bubbles stay trapped. So if we are dissolving a gas into a solution, think of a soda, we want to decrease the temperature of the solvent. The colder the soda, the more bubbly it is. If you have a warm soda, it's very foamy and fizzy, and that's because the gas bubbles are trying to escape. We also don't want to stir or agitate the solution at all. When we do that, we move the water molecules around and the gas will find a path to escape. If you have ever <laughs> opened a soda that has been dropped or shaken, then you know that um, the shaking will allow a lot of the gas to rise to the top. You open up that can of soda and the air rushes out. Sometimes it'll even push the soda out with it and you have a big mess. Lastly, we wanna keep our gas under high pressure. So if you um, feel like squeeze a brand new soda bottle that's never been opened versus one that has been opened, you'll notice that the new sealed bottle is uh, very firm. And the reason for that is because there is extra air sitting on top of the solution. So over the soda up to the lid, there is an air space there and that is packed with a bunch of air to force the carbon dioxide to stay down. This is related to vapor pressure. I will link that video in the description below. Um, so what happens is that air is gonna push down on the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide won't have a high enough vapor pressure to push against that air pocket and join. So it'll have to stay in the solution, making your soda carbonated. That is all for the factors that affect solubility. Solubility charts are coming up next. They can be difficult to read, but it's important to know that temperature is going to be the greatest indicator of the amount of stuff that you can dissolve. Whether that stuff is solid or gas, it's gonna come down to temperature. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one and I'll see you there.